What comes to mind when you hear the term radar? Maybe you envision a large antenna pointed at the sky like you see at the airport. Or, if you like to drive real fast, you might think of that police officer hiding in a speed trap, waiting to give you a ticket. If you have a newer car, it might use radar along with other sensors to assist with driving. Ships use radar to look out for bad weather, aircraft use radar to determine their altitude. There are radar systems all around us, and they touch our lives more than we often realize. Even though these examples serve very different purposes, they all work on the same basic principle. So let's talk about how a radar works. The term radar is an acronym that stands for Radio Detection and Ranging. That tells us we're using radio waves to detect objects in the world around us, and range or determine how far away they are. Now, we can't see radio waves, so to demonstrate this concept, let's use something we can see, tennis balls. Imagine that I'm a radar, and this tennis ball is a pulse of electromagnetic energy. It's a radio signal. As a radar, I'll detect objects, which we'll refer to as targets, by using an antenna to transmit this signal in a specific direction. If there's a target over there that's reflective to those radio waves, it'll bounce some of that energy back towards me, and I'll receive an echo in response. I don't seem to be getting anything back from that direction, so that must mean there's not anything to detect that way within range. So, let's try aiming somewhere else. The direction a radar is pointed from side to side along the horizon is called the azimuth, and how high up or down it's aimed is its elevation. This seems like a good spot, so I'll transmit another pulse, wait for a response, and this time I got a return signal. Not only does this tell us there's a target in that direction, we can also determine how far away it was by measuring the time it took to receive that echo. If the object was really close, the ball would bounce back quickly. But if the target was far away, it would take a longer time to travel there and back. Let's try searching again in another direction. I'll transmit a pulse over here. And this time, I got two echoes back. That tells us there are two targets in that direction, so the radio signal bounced off of both of them. And because those reflections arrive back here at different times, we can determine how far away each of those objects are. In addition to distance and direction, we can also detect how fast a target is moving towards or away from the radar using a phenomenon called the Doppler effect. If we transmit radio waves at an object that's moving towards us, when those waves reach the object and get reflected, they'll be compressed. And that returned signal we get back will be at a higher frequency than what we originally sent. Likewise, if the target is moving away, those reflected waves will be stretched out, and the frequency of the return signal will be lower than what we transmitted. By comparing the difference between what we transmitted and the received frequencies, we can tell how fast the target was moving towards or away from us. If you prefer to think of it in terms of the tennis ball, imagine I'm tossing this towards a tennis racket that's swinging towards me really fast. That ball is going to be compressed and bounce back at me a lot faster than I threw the ball. Uh, we'll, we'll forgo that demonstration for now. Now, a real radar obviously doesn't toss around tennis balls. It transmits radio waves. And those radio waves move fast at the speed of light. If a target is 1,000 kilometers away, it only takes around 3 milliseconds for the transmitted signal to get there and back to the radar. If the target is just a few meters away, that round-trip time shrinks to just tens of nanoseconds. Since a radar works by measuring that time delay and comparing the received signal to what it sent, it's critical that a radar's transmitter and receiver are tightly synchronized, which is often easier said than done. Another challenge radar systems face is propagation loss. As those radio waves travel through the atmosphere over long distances, they get attenuated and lose a lot of energy. To make matters worse, not all of the energy that reaches that target will get reflected back to make the long return journey. The size, shape, and materials in that object will determine how much energy it will reflect, which is referred to as the object's radar cross-section. The amount of energy that gets back to the radar receiver can be tiny compared to what was transmitted. For that reason, the radar transmitters often need high-powered amplifiers to send out really big signals, and then on the receiver side, they need really sensitive low-noise amplifiers to pick up the tiny response. Now, there are lots of different variations in the radio signals that different radar systems use. In terms of frequency, we have radar all across the spectrum. Down on the lower end, in what's called the HF band from 3 to 30 megahertz, 
Radio waves are able to travel much farther than at higher frequencies because they don't get absorbed as much by the atmosphere. That makes the HF band really useful for long-range radar that can see thousands of miles, even over the horizon beyond the curvature of the Earth. On the other end of the spectrum, up in the V and W bands at tens of gigahertz, radio waves are attenuated a lot more by the atmosphere, so they can only travel relatively short distances. But systems are able to achieve much better range resolution because they can use much wider bandwidths up at those frequencies. That makes those frequencies useful for things like automotive radar, which only need to detect objects within a few meters around a vehicle, but they need to do so very accurately. Of course, there are lots of other types of radar that live between those two extremes, and systems don't just operate at a single frequency. Many radar systems transmit signals that modulate or sweep their frequency across a certain range, which is known as a chirp. Some radar emit a continuous wave or output signal, whereas other types of radars pulse their outputs on and off. Those pulses might be extremely short, just a few nanoseconds in duration, or they could be relatively long, lasting several microseconds. Some radar repeatedly transmit pulses very quickly, one after the other, whereas other systems wait for long intervals between pulses, leaving more time for a pulse to travel to faraway targets and back before sending out the next pulse. These characteristics just scratch the surface of all the ways radar signals can be manipulated and processed to achieve specific goals, and that's what makes radar design so interesting. Radar engineers play a balancing game between the laws of physics and advancements in modern technology. Amplifiers keep getting better, antenna designs improve, computers are faster than before, and so on. Engineers take advantage of those new technologies to build more capable radar, but they still have to make trade-offs and design decisions to optimize their system for a specific purpose. And that's an exciting challenge.